Hey everybody, welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I'm your girl, Jessie Mae Peluso. How you doing? How you living? How you loving? I'm so pumped for this week. We have so many things coming out that I mentioned months and months ago to you guys that I had to keep under wraps until things were starting to move and evolve, and they are. First and foremost, this weekend I'm going to be in New York City kicking off my girl pod tour with Carly Aquilino. That's going to be at City Winery, October 9th. Two shows, first show is sold out, second show is just about sold out. It probably will be by the time this is up but go and check out anyways. It's uh, our podcast show will be the second show at 930. That's the one we only have seats available for. But don't fret. This tour will be going all across America in spring 2022. We're just doing a few shows this year to say hi to you guys and, and get out on the road a little bit. We will also be in Texas together uh, November 18th, 19th, and 20th in Austin, Texas at the Creek in the Cave. That will also have podcast shows as well. So just check out. And when you check out, just make sure you are at the correct show. So just check out if it's a stand-up show or a podcast show, just so you are prepared because not everybody wants to see a live podcast. And I don't know who those people are. They're weird because it's going to be so much fun. So come to Texas, Austin, Texas, Creek in the Cave, November November 18th, 19th, and 20th. My wide open tour has continued. I will be out solo on the road a little bit for the rest of the year. I'm trying to convince Carly to hop on a couple shows and I'll have uh, Leo Flowers there as well. That's the Wide Open Tour. Both of those, you can find tickets at jessiemay.com. So make sure you differentiate between the Girl Tour and the Wide Open Tour. And, ooh, more information. My Spotify podcast is going to be coming out. We re-shot it in quarantine and we reimagined it for this new world where there's a lot of different ways to get you guys content and it's it's going to be a live show weekly that's what the latest is i just spoke to spotify yesterday and we're going to do a weekly live high induced dating show it's going to be so much fucking fun i can't wait it's years in the making that's what this industry is known for. You hurry up and wait. All of my projects have taken well over two years to get going. So that podcast will be out and available on Spotify after we record it live. So you'll have two ways to enjoy that. And I'll get you more information as that evolves as well. So I'm basically going to have five podcasts because this week is the launch of my newest podcast. <laughs> they're just fun and I don't need to validate it. You know, I'm not going to validate it. You guys know why we do it. This week is the launch of my final third, fourth and final podcast. <laughs> not final, but final one that I'm going to create. Cause I don't think there's any more days in the week for me to release anything. <laughs> this week is a swap cast to promote my newest podcast with, someone who you guys have requested just as much as Carly for me to do a podcast with Mr. Mike Tully, him and I have partnered up. We created a podcast together and we recorded a swap cast to promote said podcast. And I hope you guys enjoy it. It will be on Patreon as well. It's called the deuce. So without further ado, I would like to introduce this week's guest father podcaster mark mcgrath's bottom please enjoy this episode with my new co-host of the deuce mr mike tully sharp tongue podcast beep 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 you're listening to the sharp tongue podcast i'm your host jesse may jesse peluso may. it's a personal Look, well, it's not really a look because it's a podcast. I'm already fucking this up. This is kind of like a verbal comedy diary, a deep look into the crevices of my mind. It's going to get dirty. You might cry. You'll probably laugh. Hopefully you'll laugh. The whole point is for you to laugh, but you also might cry. I talk about my family. I talk about farts. farts. I talk about love, loss, comedy, 
how hard it is to make it in this biz. I'm a fucking professional. Each week it's something different. Sometimes I have a guest host. Sometimes it's going to be a movie companion episode. Sometimes I just ramble about the bullshit I dealt with the week before. You never know what you're going to get. It's raw, uncut, and funny. It's me. Coming to you live on tape from beautiful scenic Culver City adjacent California from my above ground basement boasting a near constant cacophony of nearby construction noises that have at least for the moment ceased fingers crossed this is the Tully show I am your host Mike Tully joining me today following travels to lands of ice and snow (laughs) welcome back the people's champion, Jesse May Peluso. Hello. We're here. We did it. When is the last time I spoke to you? Uh, like five minutes before, before I got here. When is the last time I spoke to you with microphones in front of our faces? Uh, months. Has it been months? I'm getting a noise. What do you, uh-oh. It's just because these things are right next to each other. He's that getting a noise. Cool. It's never good when you're recording a podcast and your co-host goes just blank staring into the void and goes i'm getting a noise and i just heard hammering but uh, but they're both gone now i think i say we're just fine i say we're just fine let's be real these mics don't pick up that shit cut to everybody screaming at us yeah because score one for cheap mics no it's been a hot minute i don't know when the last time i saw you in the flesh was we've traveled between the two of us very far you well where have you been other than alaska vancouver yeah <laughs> Vancouver, New York. It's like York hipster City. hipster Alaska. <laughs> Vancouver's hipster Alaska. Vancouver's like <sighs> Vancouver wants to be a European country. Canada is kind of a European country. I think it, maybe sort of, but I think what you're the thing Tell is, me what I'm trying to say. Let me mansplain Canada to you. <laughs> Please explain let, no, mansplain my feelings to me. You got to calm down. And then I'll tell you, okay? You're acting crazy. Canada is a foreign country. And I think it's so... What? It is so similar to ours. When you go to Mexico, it's fairly obvious that you have left at least 47 of the U.S. states. It's very obvious. Right. When you go to Canada, you're like, it's close enough that you feel like you're still at home. And then you go, wait a second. I don't know how many meters of beer I want to drink. Oh, and we, then you realize we're really... <laughs> We're the in the minority. Yeah, right. It's supposed to be different because it's its whole own country, and because they are they remain, I think, under the under the powerful thumb of uh, a ninety year old monarch in England. Really? They still have. Don't a, we all? I think they, we all do. I had still a crazy have, cab tell me that they still ha- that we remain subject to the Queen of England. Yes, a crazy cab driver. That's told why. Me that's, this. that's 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 the last strike. Now you just take Uber. No, no. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> he made a really good point. He wasn't just saying the king, the Queen of England. He was saying. That there are six or seven people, very rich and powerful people, who oh. run everything. And that it's based mm-hmm. in England, and one of them is, is Soros. Who's not based in England. No, I said it's there's like right. based in, not England, Europe. So there's six sorry. people who run the world. Yes, and, and... How many of these people, I hate to ask, are Jewish? Now, now we're going to get canceled. <laughs> now we're going to get canceled. I'm this sure- isn't behind the Patreon wall. <laughs> Which, by the way, can we can we let people know about that? This is oh, yeah, a this Tully is... Show Sharp Tongue swap cast that right. will serve as the long anticipated, long awaited, long overdue announcement of our brand new weekly show, The Deuce. The Deuce. It's called The Deuce, and it's going to happen as weekly implies, just about every single week. Every single week, we're committed to it, and and people can 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 commit to it themselves. Yeah, you guys commit to it. Listen to it at your leisure. There will be extra stuff. Mm-hmm. There'll be, you know, different things that we toss into the Patreon. At the very least, you're going to get a, a video and an audio of the pod every week. Right. So for people who would care for a weekly helping of helpin', this. Helping? A helping? Yeah. Oh, God. A is healthy Nancy, helping. Is Nancy Grace here? A healthy ladleful of this. God. I just thought of. Slopped onto your. Semen for some reason. Podcast plate. Go oh. to patreon.com slash. I promised myself I would know the this. The Deuce Podcast. The Deuce Podcast. Wait, yes. Is it not the Deuce Pod? It's not the Deuce Pod. I don't think so. Is I, it? I texted it to oh, you today. It's the Deuce Podcast. Guys, we are professional. Yeah. We have everything set in stone. We are. <laughs> I swear you said it's the Deuce Podcast. 
I texted it to you earlier well, by today. This point, yeah, it is the du- patreon.com slash the deuce podcast. Yes. You can go there right now, and there's a fairly good chance there's already episode one waiting for a you. A fairly, fairly good chance. It would be thousands odd of people to listen to it. Uh, yeah, beat the crowds. Get we over have there tens right of people. My One of my favorite podcasts to listen to that got me through this past year is Smartless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will, Will Arnett, Arnett Will Arnett's whose voice a, I want to date. He's a huge celebrity. He's pretty in love with with uh, his own voice. I love his voice. Yeah, he's I a big like celebrity in our house. Voice. Let me finish that statement. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, he's a big celebrity, but in your house, that's exciting. He's Lego Batman, and he hosts Lego Masters. He's so... His voice is just the greatest voice, but they say listener. They go, hey, listener. <laughs> <laughs> they have for the one listener that they have. I love that podcast. So we're we're gonna call you guys Patreon. Hey Patreon. It's funny because I like have an amazing ability to reverse call things. What do you mean? Like when nineties music started getting really stupid. Yeah. I was like, okay, well this is pretty dumb, but all right, if you say so. And then uh like the offspring came out with Keep Them Separated. And I was like, okay, everybody this surely this is the end. Now can we all it's calm so down? So bad. Having no idea that the Offspring were going to become one of the biggest bands to come out of the '90s. Weezer, similarly, the, who I actually ended up liking their first album, but the Sweater Song. I was like, okay, guys, have we done this joke? To d- this is surely this is as low as we can go. When I say this is a terrible idea, it is almost guaranteed to be fucking a blockbuster huge great idea so do you feel that way about our podcast <laughs> i feel like it's going to be huge which frightens me but i'm like the reverse nostradamus of of entertainment <laughs> success because when will arnett and jason bateman and what's his face from uh, w- will and grace how, started how homophobic of you to not remember the one gay guy on the cast were there gay people on that show i didn't notice i just enjoyed the comedy <laughs> Cut, cut to you asking your wife if you can introduce men into the relationship. So when that came out, I was like, oh, God, now it's official. Now every single celebrity has a show. I tried to not be that guy, but now I'm going to say it. Everybody thinks that they could just get in front of a microphone a and be interesting. And they are one of the biggest shows. As I say, reverse Nostradamus strikes again. It is true, though. It's like, oh, you think you could do a podcast? Not everybody can. There are a lot of terrible podcasts. But I also feel like there's a lot a lot of really good ones. Yeah, of course there are. But I'm saying their smartless one, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like literally a COVID baby. They just created it out of COVID. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. They created it out of COVID because nothing was going on. They weren't able to work. And right, so sure. they all know each other and it the guests they have. So I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. We should be promoting our podcast. <laughs> And hey, I'm like, hey, hey, everybody. I think we have a responsibility to let people know they have options. Go, you can go, go to patreon.com slash the deuce podcast. It's, it's weekly. It's very entertaining. It's a lot of this, a healthful slathering of this every single week. See, but, we, but you know, hey, but smart list is free. So, smart list is free. And better. So, and you probably know. why you <laughs> should probably go listen to smart list. <laughs> but hey, at least our egos are in check that we're promoting somebody else's free podcast. And asking you to pay to listen to ours. I'm sure they would do the same for us. I have no doubt about that. I've lost it. And we're only 10 minutes in. My face hurts and I've snorted. It's so funny to me, interesting to me, how people who started doing podcasts, maybe like, obviously they hoped it might be successful. If not, they I think a lot of them just go, hey, I get to hang out with my friends. It's something to do. It's such an odd thing to become your career. It is a very like, odd like, thing. Like if you're Dak Shepard and you get offered a movie role, the odds are you're saying no unless it really, really, really makes sense because your podcast has so far exceeded what I think. I don't know. Maybe he went in going, it's going to be Joe Rogan and then me, but I doubt it. I think he went in thinking maybe it'll flop. Hopefully it'll be like successful, a right. revenue stream, something I can do that I can be proud of that I can make some money from. But now that is his job. Like Joe it's Rogan so does does stand up comedy because he likes doing stand up comedy. He has, there's no reason why he needs to do it, you know. Yeah, no, Arrested he Development maybe can finally fucking die now because it hasn't <gasps> actually been very good for. Is it still going? Arrested Development still in production. Well, now I think it's probably got to be done because everybody turned on the dad and the mom died. Oh well, spoiler alert. We'll have to put that in the show notes. <laughs> Sh- show's like 10 years old, right? Yeah. No, I mean, she like in real life, the actress who played Lucille oh. Bloom <laughs> died. And the dad and the dad seems like a real life creep, too. Oh, my God. I'm like, she died in the show. 
<laughs> You're like, yeah, the big show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She died in the big show. Wait, before we started recording, mm-hmm. we, uh, this is what Have you're we saying. we started? Yeah. All right. Did we start? Good show. Okay. <laughs> I hope we started. Um, you and me both. I The story you're telling is so riveting about um, Arrested Development. I wanted to talk... <laughs> I got more on that. We'll get back to that. Don't worry. Guys, stop. <laughs> we're gonna, we're going to touch on that a little bit later. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Oh Smart list can wait. But I want to talk about how I just, like, literally just got into Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that. Yeah. It's a good show. I, and it is, I think it's the greatest place for someone like me to hang their blunt hat on. Well, I guess maybe not hang the blunt hat, but take the hat off and put it on your head. What I'm trying to say okay, is wait, it's first, great to smoke weed and watch fr- Frick and Morty. What's uh, his name? His name is Rick. <laughs> no, I said Frick. <laughs> I told you I'm an antibiotic. I think it's Italian. <laughs> fungal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fungal. These I antibiotics. Think, you know, fungal. You know fungal. <laughs> yeah, right? I grew up around you people. Yeah. <laughs> so I went on Ari, yeah. you know Ari Manis. Mm-hmm. You know Ari Manis? Mm-mm. He's a comedian with a podcast. Yeah. Oh, wow unlicensed therapist it's a terrific idea there's another podcast for you guys it's called unlicensed <laughs> but after that after you're done listening to that for free. okay so um i went on ari's show a few months back and i said fangul you know and he's like what's and he goes what's a fangul and we had this like five minute conversation i couldn't even speak because i was laughing so hard because you don't know what fangul was so i was just happy that you just knew what fangul was not only do i know what fangul is <laughs> I'm, i hope i'm saying it incorrectly to Mm-mm. your because i love i have a real hang up about northeastern people and the way that they pronounce italian words oh I, which they're very i am that and i do too you're very committed to that pronunciation mozzarella, mozzarella. calm down trish yeah. you're in utica right exactly let's take a seat okay uh, by the way the these italian people who uh, they pronounce it pronounce it <laughs> so incorrectly keep going <laughs> they've never even been to italy no i know i know <laughs> they're like mozzarella my Sister, oh my God, we were in an Italian restaurant. Joey's, yeah. egg, egg, gabagool. Yeah. Supper's that. No, I've been mutz splained in been restaurants mutz- more than once. I'm sure you haven't. Yeah. It's so infuriating. And as a fellow, well, not fellow, a Sicilian, yes. uh, I find it. Ex- as a fellow and a Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> extremely infuriating. My brother in law ordered, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the dish now. It was like something that required. S- the person you're speaking about to say it and cor- you know like it, it it it's one of those dishes that you go mozzarella to yeah gabagool gabagool and so my brother-in-law isn't that person and so he just said it the way anyone else would say it mm-hmm. I, I, god i wish i could remember the dish but basically let's just say it was mozzarella pasta fazool that's what it was yeah how it's did one, you that's, know? that's one of the bangers how did you know fagioli pronounced fazool yeah so that's exactly what it was. So he says, all of the pasta, fazioli, faz- whatever. Fagioli is right. actually Fa- the way the fagioli. Italians. Yeah, right. And my sister goes, he wants the pasta fazioli. And I go, excuse me, Mrs. Soprano. Right, right, right. I need you to take a seat. Mm-hmm. Because we are at Carrier Circle in upstate oh, yeah. New York, right near the thruway. We are not on the Amalfi Coast. No, you're not. And, and, and there and, they don't even say and it. And that's more to the point is, have I explained to you why we do this why that is a thing that Sopranos. happens well but even before it even before that no please mansplain language to me it's because i've i've, t- I've this come up so many times because it's such a preoccupation of mine it's because the italian immigrants who came to america did say it that way the italian language was a bunch of different dialects that got codified into one language did you just codify me codify is actually the way i think we're you're supposed 15 to say it. minutes in so they're not entirely wrong that their grandfather's grandfather's grandfather did say it something like that. They're wrong in not knowing that no one has said it that way in Italy for like 150 years. It, I've said this so many times on so many podcasts, but I if I if I have anything to give, you're the world, racist. It is against against uh, northeastern Italians a little bit. I want a hat that like says your, like yourself. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized you're in my home, and I'm just like, uh, yeah. I'm totally racist toward your kind. Yeah, so I, you were so saying am I. about the Jews. So am I. So I am what too. did your so what did the taxi driver tell you? He said, "Well, do taxi driver then Rick you, and Morty." Guys, we're touching. There's any time at the end, I'll talk a little more arrested a, development. I we promise. We need a fact checker. Checker. <laughs> oh, 
the guy said that, you know, if you think about where all the wars have been. On fought. land. <laughs> <laughs> what about Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's that was that was that was the first bit of land. Shit. Think about it. They hadn't seen the a, they hadn't seen a bit of land for two thousand miles. All of a sudden, land. boom! Coincidence. Also, what about emotional wars? <laughs> <laughs> Often fought at sea. Ask, ask Natalie Wood. <laughs> oh my god! But you goodness. can't because she's floating like a log. Yeah, and so- don't ask Christopher Walken, or else he'll be sleeping with her. <laughs> We're These are deep cuts. Get, what am I saying? Um, <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, the wait. cab driver. Yeah. So I don't think he's 100% wrong. All the places where there have been war, yeah. a bank is established. Where are pl- where are banks not established? Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about like the, 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 the big bank. Like Bank of England? Kind yes. Of thing? Okay. And that... We're, so basically wars are fought so that these six rich people can go in and establish the bank and start to have control over all of the money that's that's being circulated around the world and that that is all pooled and filled back to these six people mm-hmm. it, it might be six seven or eight but basically there are a, a small group of people who are in europe who are rich as hell billionaires who are running the world everything that's going on as far as like the media is concerned um, big corporations, big pharma, all of that shit is tied in. I don't think that's a conspiracy. I don't think it's far-fetched to think that there is a smaller group of billionaires that are running all of these systems. I would literally call that the mother of all conspiracies. Wow. I think that is the wow. that is the, the root. What do you think's going on then? I think the world is a big, crazy, chaotic place with a lot of people with no scruples. It sounds um, like a Casey Musgraves lyric. Oh, now what rhymes with scruples? <laughs> Pupils. <laughs> Pupils, I know, I know. Not a, not a very country. Do you know Casey? Wow, your references she's, are good. She's country, right? Yeah, she's great. Uh, I think people have a hard time b- accepting that nobody is at the steering wheel and they would prefer to believe that there are e- there's evil people pulling the strings. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay so I, j- I just read a book about the rise of Hitler and Nazi Germany. Racist. Uh, it was such a page turner. <laughs> um, was it a page burner Ooh, nice you're welcome how would that tie into your taxi drivers <laughs> theory of the world because it seemed to me from the book that i read that germany was kind of itching for a fight themselves they were itching for a fight so did, but what, did what George, was established in germany after was there is there a bank a of, big ass bank okay and are there no big ass banks in america our big ass bank is linked back to England, the Bank of England. Google it. What do you, but what, what does linked mean? Like you can, it's send, all you, that can send, shit. you can send a wire transfer. Yeah, there's a, it scooches back. It, it scooches back there. This is these are the science. Federal <laughs> Reserve scooches. <laughs> here's a question to George Soros. <laughs> yes, here's a question. Is it a yellow taxi? <laughs> I'm taking those for what nostalgia. Here's a question. Miss the smell of vomit. <laughs> of a bonnet. <laughs> Why can't what sort of why? antibiotics did they give you? And are you aware those are not antibiotics? I'm not aware. <laughs> <laughs> why how why dare can't you? I'm not aware of anything. Bank? Why isn't there a system to audit the bank? Don't you think that's strange? The I think Federal I think this, the powers a- the powers that be would say that they're so- that we have a government of of checks and balances and that indeed it is audited. I'm not. I, 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 I'm not there when they do it. I don't know. I'm Google taking. Google it. I'm Where's taking, your phone? Put the put it I'm in the. I'm not Google. gonna Google. Do they audit the Federal Reserve? Because you know they don't. Because yeah, because I'm afraid of what Google might tell me. Actually, Google- that's kind of true. I am afraid of what my phone might tell me. Not because I think it's true, but because I'm afraid of everything everyone is telling everybody. I know because it's all all of it's a lie. Some of it's true. I told Jesse Ventura that. He was like spouting all kinds of... Did you just of... name drop? I, I did. Yeah. I don't like to do that. I You looked like you enjoyed it. Never, never, I'm, never, I'm sitting never name right drop. Here. I'm sitting right never here. Never name drop. Your eyes sparkled. Nat King Cole and you got a half judge. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that joke. <laughs> what did you just say? I said never name drop. 
Nat King Cole told me that. That's so stupid. It's such an old joke. You gotta get out of the house. You gotta get away from your kids. I I have been out of the house. But you were in Hawaii. It, it turns out that's not the problem. I need <laughs> to get away get from back. my children. Yeah, you can't go out of the house and with your kids. There were definitely times like I gotta, I, I gotta say this low. They're all like a couple feet up above oh, us. We I had a, we had a, we had a wonderful time. We made some memories. I'm not joking about that. But there are times when I legitimately ask myself, would I be happier if I was home alone right now? Well, that's the grass is greener thing, and which you tap into on in my ovaries by sending me photos of your perfect daughter, which I do think is a tactic on your on your part. Shh. It's evil. Do you th- <laughs> do I have something to gain? Mm-hmm. To yeah, well, first I get Fucking you knocked. Kno- first I get you knocked up. Fucking up my plan. Then we funnel it back to England. <laughs> Um, That's where all the babies are funneled back to England. You Google it. Everybody listening, you guys can Google confirm it. or deny. You let me, you let me know. You let, let me know, know if my conspiracy out. is wrong. Um, put it in the comments underneath this post in our Patreon. If you can hear this noise, I'm de-oiling my face. Let us know if you have any information about this. Obviously, I can Google, but I'm way busy. So if you guys could Google it. <laughs> kind of in the middle of a podcast over here. So. I'm in the middle of a podcast, so I want to know what you guys think. You look really nice today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm aware you did not do this for me. No, or, I did. Or, or I for, did this. Or for us. <laughs> what did I... Listen, I knew I had Corolla. Yeah. Name drop. Mm-hmm. Or real name drop. Just <laughs> Ventura, who's that? Um, Take your net, King Colin. <laughs> no, I, I planned it this way so I could also show up and look nice for our podcast. It's really, really nice of you, but I think we all know. You, you took the nice shoes off. You took well, off... because you can't... You, see? See now? See? You took off the fuck me they pumps can't and, you, and, you, see. and you put on the... Well, neither could anybody at Corolla, but you took off the fucking no, pumps could. There and, was... and, and, put, and put on the Where's My Seltzer Crocs. You're in a free t-shirt. You won <laughs> off of a radio. Are you kidding raffle. me? I love this shirt and nobody likes You're it You're in me. a free Champions. Who, what is this band? It looks like a it's vaccination. Not a, it's ba- not a band. What is it? It's clearly a sports. Oh, is it? Because it looks like the COVID. It looks like the COVID disease right there. Does COVID have a logo? Did you get this after you got vaccinated? This I sh- got. The shirt I got. <laughs> kiss me. I'm vaccinated. I got this Washington Generals. People already, some of them are getting the reference. I got this Washington Generals t shirt. The only one they were selling at the merch stand at the Harlem Globetrotters. In the, game. Ma- in the airport. The Harlem Globetrotters. This you is- spilled coffee on a shirt and you, you stole that from an airport Hudson News. This is the team. <laughs> this is the team that loses to the Harlem the Harlem Globetrotters every night. Oh, okay. I knew there was some nerd shit going on. A deep nerd shit. That's some real. That's a real deep cut. My dad actually took me to see the Harlem Globetrotters when I was a little kid, and I was like totally enthralled. It's fun when you're real little. I can't tell if it's gotten worse or if kids just have worse taste than I realized at the time when I was one because it was it felt pretty slapdash and half assed yeah. when I took the kids. Well, I mean, look at Blippy. That's a that that guy is a, a million multi millionaire now, and he's like burr, 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 burr. those are the noises I hear. Yeah, I and respect I respect I respect Blippy because I see through Blippy. Oh, you do? Yeah, cause I don't not respect him. I'm just saying it's a little you know it's kid humor. I respect any child's entertainer who's in it strictly for the money. I'm I, I I'm uh, very suspicious of the ones who do it because they like children and like making children happy. Excuse Blippi. me, Mr. Rogers. He's all right. Blippy to me is a guy who very obviously, and I know this kind of for a fact, tried a couple of more conventional like YouTube. Like there's a there's he a tr- tried stand up comedy for a week and he, then said fuck it because he wasn't. And there's a video where he wasn't like happening. he shit on his friend or his friend shit on him. That's real. Like you can totally yeah. find it. Yeah. Um, I think there's actually a decent like Will Ferrell or Seth Rogen type movie to be made about somebody who does what I think Blippy did, which is they're not going anywhere in their entertainment career and then they're sister has a kid and they see what their kid is watching on youtube and they go oh, i could do that and then I all of a sudden being, and, and i believe that's blippy's story i could see that being a thing and they already made the movie it's called it, welcome to the neighborhood or whatever that movie was with tom hanks playing mr, mr. Rogers. rogers i honestly with all those cancellations happening i was really concerned we were going to lose mr rogers in the mix even though it would be a posthumous uh, account uh, okay, you comic types really love this cancel culture thing, so let's do this. I just was so worried he was going to get canceled. He, why would he have been? Canceled? I don't know. Because who else got canceled? Are you gonna, I don't are know. Are you going to say Dr. Seuss? Are you going to say Dr. Seuss? No, Dr. Seuss didn't cancel. They preemptively did it. What do you mean? They took they they took away stuff. The Dr. Seuss estate said that they were never going to they were they were going to stop printing a select number of yes. titles. So they didn't they had, get canceled, but they were. Why did they do that? 
because it was really inappropriate because they literally had like people like uh asian drawn yeah and and like savage like ooga booga type people and the dr seuss family was like literally no one's ever heard of these books anyway because it was not green eggs and ham and it wasn't the cat in the hat it was shit but shit i've read so much there are so many dr seuss books i felt like i had never heard of that i have received as gifts and read to my kids over and over and the ones that they stopped printing are ones i've never heard of and they actually were really really inappropriate so, so do you think things should be canceled then <sighs> do you think where does yeah. it end i feel like it's the same thing with <clears throat> what's going on now where's the end when right. are people going to be happy? Right, and that's the question. Is the internet only knows one form of justice, and that's that's total cancellation. And we are going to need to figure out a way to rehabilitate people, to learn to accept their apology, and figure out what sort of timeout they deserve. Heck yeah, because if murderers can get off in a 20-year sentence... Mm-hmm. I don't think that people should just be completely exonerated. Or I agree with shouldn't, that. Should not be exonerated. But being able to entertain to me is a privilege, not a right. Like, I think the barrier to, if you, uh, let's just say a football player goes to a hometown buffet and everyone in the hometown buffet gets violently murdered and the only person who doesn't get killed that night is that football player. But they can't prove that that person did it. And then they go to like three more towns and three more hometown buffets get completely slaughtered. Everyone endured. And they go, we cannot fucking pin it on this guy. Everybody knows he's the hometown buffet massacrer. It sounds we, like it's food poisoning. But we can't pin it. No, it's like violent, like throat slashing and shit like that. I think at a certain point, the league is allowed to say, you are no longer to play football. allowed to play football. We know that you're the guy who kills everybody at hometown buffet. And... We don't need to have you here. You are free. You are a free citizen. You can you can pursue your your life's ambitions, murder and otherwise, elsewhere. But you can't do it here anymore. I get that, but are you? It's like the Michael Vick thing. So are you saying? That's which is probably a way better example than the one I used. I guess I because I make a living and I connect with people, and you do too, mm-hmm. with words. Yeah. I think that there is a there's a conflict of interest when you say it's a privilege, not a right, because within our careers we are protected by a right yes the right to free speech right yeah. right the first amendment so it gets sticky when we go well we can say that but you can't say this you can say this but you can't say that well no 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 because your, your constitutional you right to, to, to free speech is guaranteed that you are allowed to say that and not be imprisoned for saying that well what will define imprisonment because right now i think the even just the word war is different now and that's something that like uh Giannis papas was talking to me about like how we're kind of in a war now so words are sort of evolving Mm -hmm. imprisonment can mean different things maybe not like being thrown behind jail but i don't know losing everything sounds like a form of of punishment if you are entitled to i'll say this life liberty and the pursuit of happiness you could easily be said to have lost like louis ck may have lost his right to his pursuit of happiness because of things that were not judged to be criminal by any judge or jury. Yeah, and but I also, at the same time, it wasn't the state, it wasn't the government that was doing that to him. And that's the big distinction that I feel like a lot of comedians conveniently overlook. I'm not saying the current situation is cool or desirable and isn't in need of some serious fucking help. But it, until the government starts locking people up because they make bad jokes at a comedy club, nobody needs to be invoking First Amendment rights. Yeah, I I get that. I think you have a good point there. But I also see what's going on and how we're allowing, I guess, people behind their computer screens to become these, the judge, the jury, and the prosecutor, and the the defending lawyer all in one. Mm -hmm. And there's no accountability. There's no both sides to the story. That's gone out. That feels to me like that has not completely gone out the window, but it's definitely more thrown to the wayside. Like having a a full approach to a situation, looking at it from all angles. That's not so much the status quo anymore. No, people think in... in, Twitter only has, what, 280 characters now? But it turns out that's kind of perfect because the vast majority of people can't think in greater than 280 word statements anyway it, yeah yeah it's easy to blame the medium but it's not as if if if, if twitter allowed for um people to write 10 paragraphs at a time it would still be the one sentence people killing each other yeah it's just cr- i guess it's that sort of thing where you know hindsight really is 
is the winner. It's, hindsight is the thing that sort of reveals what we're doing wrong. We don't know it when we're doing it. So I, we might not even in our lifetime see the ramifications of what's going on now. But I think of something like the R. Kelly case. Mm-hmm. Like take that for instance. Um, is it take that for instant or for instance? Instance. Right? I said that is right. one instance of a larger. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um He's being, I'm not, I, I think he obviously is guilty and has done some terrible things. Well, Bill Cosby disagrees. <clears throat> of course, because they're, you know, birds of a feather. Yeah. Fuck together. Bosom buddies. Oof, those two. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, mm-hmm. the music and the entertainment catalog between those two, that permeates decades. <clears throat> Ours got some jams. <laughs> 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 Nobody's debating that. <laughs> but... I think what's lacking in these cases, and maybe it's going to come up because I think his trial has yet to even really get into the nitty gritty because he just had a new defense uh, attorney uh, hired. Is he's going to appeal? Yeah, yeah, he's going to appeal. And what about his camp? Same thing with Harvey Weinstein. Same thing with you know the crash in two thousand eight. It's not just one bank that caused that. It's not just Harvey Weinstein that was the one that was allowing those things to go on. And it certainly wasn't just R. Kelly. Sure, they were all the main perpetrators, but there was a group of people surrounding them contributing to the demise. Are you saying that there were other people? Because I believe that there are other studio heads who over the years have abused their power like Harvey Weinstein did. There's definitely the bank thing is blatantly obvious. I forget the guy. He may have been the CEO of Citibank sort of said something like as as long as the music is still playing, you need to keep dancing. Yeah. Which is to say they all saw the writing on the wall. They all knew and they didn't. And they 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 bailed each other out and the banks, everybody was, you know, there wasn't what I'm saying is. But are you saying that there are you talking about there's other R. Kelly's that are as bad as him? Are you talking about the people who worked with and for him who enabled him? Okay. His camp. Yeah. That a beast is fed. People were feeding him well, he verbally. Was, yeah, but he was also feeding them. He he was feeding them, but they were keeping quiet. Yeah. They were keeping him healthy enough to have enough energy to be the monster that he was. Yeah. But show me a rich criminal who can't surround themselves with... Yes, men. Suck-ups, yeah. Yeah, and, right. and I just think that those people are just going to scatter like fucking roaches back into society. Oh, they're just going to change and become good people? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Bullshit. They're going to go infect however they're living their lives into a different industry or maybe the same industry who knows the point is that those people have shown that they're capable of keeping their mouth shut if they're getting fed yeah and to me that's criminal too it's accomplice sure yeah and i, I mean i'm off the top of my head i, I can't think of so passionate i can't think of shit. charges but yeah i mean to to know that somebody is to aiding and abetting a crime is a crime in and of itself and as a woman reading through the um there's an interview of his new defense attorney, which is something I'm going to get into on a whole other episode. She made a statement about the compliance of these girls. These girls were like 13 years old. I was a 13 year old. You are compliant because of how society has raised you because of how you've been raised because of things you've heard and external talk that, makes you think a certain way about yourself yeah and because he is fucking r kelly he's r kelly powerful people can be persuasive and you mix that with a young girl of course she's going to be compliant that doesn't mean her compliance means that she wanted or deserved what happened to her no of course that's asinine right it's right and and just to have that be a conversation in this whole case really infuriates me because i look at a woman and i've thought this about defense attorneys how ki- you must have a certain level of competitiveness in you to want to defend somebody like that. Yeah. yeah and I, you must be really addicted to the law. But, well, do you know what? I talked to a defense attorney one time who I want to say she did like murder trials or something like wow. that. And I, and I asked her how she could do it. And I'm going to put a couple of words in her mouth. I think she kind. Well, I think she kind careful. of just like didn't care. I think she was kind of like, well, if I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. But when I try to like pin her down on how can you like sleep at night doing this, she's otherwise a really really nice person had a nice family. She said her understanding of the law system from having seen it up close is that it's so fucked up that justice is 
justice is not the aim or the end result very often in the justice system. It's just this bad system where you're playing by your crooked way and I'm going to play by my crooked way. And it wouldn't be fair to, um, to somebody who was guilty to play by, if, if you believe that you, that the, everybody is entitled to uh, proper representation, then you are basically entitled in her mind to like crooked representation because wow. because the state is going to be doing crooked shit to try to take you down too. And there's the sad thing is that there's logic in that. It made sense to me because yeah. the system is. And she broken. knew better. I deferred expertise. You know, she knew what she was talking about better than I do. The, Everybody on fucking lines got to figure out that every time you argue about everything, taxi driver or or whoever, <laughs> he was telling the truth. You it was facts. It may have been his truth. He may believe it to be true. He may have lots of compelling evidence. And I'm not saying none of us should have opinions, but you need to be humble about your opinion. That if you're not in the room where these um, pizza bloodthirsty pedophile decisions are being made hanging out with the movers and shakers you don't know what you're fucking talking about. i totally agree and i that's kind of how i approach scenarios as well i just like to oh no I it's, like fu- to it's fun get into stuff it's fun and uh, you know i, I it's learned fun i learned a lot from i would see sometimes listener speculation about dynamics of stuff on the jason ellis show and i thought it was fun because sometimes they were right sometimes they totally had it figured out somebody was arguing with so and so but a lot of times it was more like they were dead wrong and i go Oh, but I see how they got there. Yeah. yeah, they did that and they did that and they don't know about this and they misinterpreted that and they put together a very compelling case <laughs> that is dead fucking wrong. It is fun. And it was a learning experience It's for fun me. to conspire. Of course it is, yeah. It makes whatever is going on a little bit less brutal. And the systems are broken. And I think the reality of what's happening is we're going to cave in on ourselves. That's just the only way humanity... That's the only direction humanity is headed. And I don't think it's a bad thing. A reckoning? A purge? So, not so much a reckoning, but maybe a, a an internal purge. In, mm. Because each individual... A purge pur- of the soul. A purge of the soul. Yeah. But in a destructive way. I think oh, we are... Okay. <laughs> our own hands are, are the worst, are the actual weapons of what's causing everything. We need to violently purge ourselves. Yes, that's basically what I'm saying. Okay. Not that we need to, we are going to. We already are uh yeah maybe 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 things have been weird and crazy before i don't i, th- I don't th- I, I think this is a high water mark of crazy in american society but i'm not sure it is the high water mark no i would have to say probably the uh, any time around the gladiator the whole gladiator not, world not, not technically american no but i just mean in the world it's oh, yeah. humanity that was pretty wild. That oh, if was you, pretty crazy. If you extend to all of humankind, then things are very, very... Then we live in uh, a very, very peaceful and very, very functional democracy. What was the craziest? What was the most... Are we Are we in the most destructive no. time? No. Hell no. Are you kidding me? We live in the longest <clears throat> protracted era of global peace that mankind has ever known. Oh, the big nap. Oh, bro, it's been the big nap. We've been chilling. Everything's been great, bro. Super, super, super slow. Just saying we haven't sent teenagers to foreign countries to murder that's each other true. en masse for almost 100 years. Like, I'm going to a little pat on the back. Yeah, Humankind I think that's right pretty there. dope. Yeah. But again, back to my conversation about the evolution of words and their meaning, mm-hmm. like imprisonment yeah. and war. Right. Uh, to Giannis Papas's point, he was saying there is a war happening right now. It's just more of a silent war. It's a war that's happening on an economic level. It's a war that's happening on a political level because of mutual assured destruction. We can't have those wars anymore because everyone pretty much has nukes now. Yes. So the traditional I- idea of a war is kind of passe now. We have to get a little bit more creative and a little bit more infiltrated in a technological way, in a political way, Yes. in a bio chemical way the way that you raised your eyebrow when you said that led me to believe that your taxi driver also had some things to say about biochemistry. no this is before covid uh-huh yeah this is way before covid i don't think you know we look at the history of of humanity and how brutal we've been and the fact that there are were cannibalistic tribes and just brutal genocide and all these things hitler things that have existed would it be so crazy to think that some of these conspiracies are real? That's the thing that no, no, of course not. Me out. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. that's crazy. Think about what Hitler accomplished. That's crazy. 
Yes. That's insanity. And I, I would even go out as far to say that because of the lack of technology and the way people had to, you know, get information, a Paul Revere style back in the day, there were people who probably thought that didn't even fucking, that's not going on right now. There are probably people who really, as that was happening. The Holocaust. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who weren't directly. <clears throat> there are still people who say it never happened. And yeah. Exactly. Which is just so, so. People didn't know. I don't believe that it was happening during the war, by the way. I don't think the average American knew about it. Well, how could we? Yeah, exactly. It was and, the kind and, of thing they were trying to keep secret. Yeah. Right. So. Anything is possible, but I do think more often than not, the answers to things are mundane, boring shit. It's, it's, a, it's a very hard to keep a conspiracy beyond a small number of people. It is. And I, I think, here's a question for the room. Yeah. For the, for the fans. Sure. What do you guys think, what do you guys think is a conspiracy that's real? Out of all the conspiracies. Yeah, somebody asked me this the other day and I couldn't come up with a I couldn't come up with a good one. I'm not even sure about aliens anymore. That's how sad that's what, how what sad did, shit's got. What did you used to be sure of that you're no that longer sure? That there were sure aliens. Of? Now you are no longer believe that there are aliens. I mean we've seen a bunch of lights in the sky, but I've seen those on shrooms. Yeah. I just I read, wanna believe. I just read an article about that. It's uh it's it kind of seems like the least bad scenario. Yeah, that chair is unforgiving. If you go down, fell. you might never come back up. I almost fell. I just had to get my poison ring that I got here. What are um, you saying? Well, just like if it's not aliens that people are seeing strange tic tacs that that go faster than the speed of sound but don't make a sonic boom, well, then you have to believe that our adversaries, evildoers, have some technology that we are never going to catch up with. I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen things that I can't explain. You have seen UFOs. I saw something in New York City that made major news. You can l l Google it now. I've talked about it on podcasts where when, when this conversation comes up, I was walking down a sh busy street in New York and you know how New Yorkers are all in their own world. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like focused on the same thing. And I was at the street corner and looking to cross the street is a red light and everybody on the opposite street, including the street I was on, was looking up. And so I looked up and there was a a very shiny chrome tampon shaped thing above way up but close enough for it to feel ominous yeah suspended not making not moving not making any sound just kind of hanging there and we all were just also suspended in the moment like what is that string no string uh, you always tuck the string up you don't want it, you don't want the string dangling cuz it can come outside of your your bathing suit your thong your skirt you don't want someone to pull that, and then you got you sound like a rag doll, Mama. right? So I'm, so an applicator. So it looked like a yeah, it looked like a um. Like Let me explain tampons a, to you. <laughs> so far, <laughs> why is this? So far, I've been mansplained <laughs> so many things. Can I hold this? I'll fix it. Oh, fix my mic, Jesus. Um, and your butt is right in the camera, Mike. Where this the is, fuck else is it supposed? I call to you <laughs> Tully. It felt so wrong to call you Mike. It felt like really, really wrong. Yeah, that's better. Thank you so much. Um. I got down to the bar where I was working, and it was on the news. Yeah. On I vaguely recall. When was this? I must have already been living out here. This was probably 2010. Okay, yeah, so I was out here. So I don't know what that was. I'll never know what that thing was. And, and maybe it's our own domestic aviation just testing shit out. Some it's, new an odd shit. it's an odd place to do it. There's places we, you, you don't test stuff That's out true. over a major city. So, do you think that there's? I know this is like the. If you are if you, you were to Google wait, are you podcast are you afraid topics, that I'm going to say yes that aliens are real? Yeah, I'm afraid because if you do, nothing makes sense to me anymore. Because yeah, if you I, believe in aliens, right. Tony, I, I I'll, th I'll probably walk into the ocean. I need well, you to not believe in get aliens. Get your aqua socks on, because <laughs> yeah, I need based you to remain on as autistic as you can. Based on the, so there's only three explanations. For my I'll, I'll give you, I'll give silver you, tampon I'll thing? I'll give you maybe a fourth. For just UFOs in general. Okay. One is that everybody's imagining things. Weather balloons, swamp gas. I think... What did you call me? <laughs> 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 I, 
told you to never repeat my high school yearbook nickname. I told you to not call me what they used to call me in the hallways of Henniger High School so, ever again. So is it everybody's just imagining something? No, I don't think that that is the case. Is it that other countries have this absurdly advanced technology that somehow, even though we're all spying on each other, we have no idea about, and Russia and China just show these things off down by San Diego? That's the scariest scenario. Again, I think that's unlikely. So then we're left with these are, and the government now does call them. I forget what they, they don't call them UFOs. They have no, you can't call them UFOs anymore. You can't call them UFOs anymore because it's not considered. Is, is it a UAF? It's a, it's an unidentified. It's an LGBTQ. I UFO. You comedians really got to kind of, Oh, you can't use that word anymore. <laughs> it's, I think it's unidentified aerial phenomenon which would be a uap it should be an unidentified aerial tampon looking motherfucker the one that you saw l m but then sometimes there's unidentified tic tacs and there's unidentified it looks like it was the shape of a tic tac okay that's exactly what it was the shape of so you saw the tic tac as well that's kind of the most famous one and the government is openly saying they don't know what it is so this is it would be funny if everyone screamed at it like the way everyone screams at bts or like the beatles from back in the day or any boy band where it's just a bunch of people they're like oh my god i'm such a big fan Show like when Death Clock shows up. Did you, did you do Death Clock? Death Clock. Speaking of uh, Death Clock, oh, met, metal now we're, now we're getting speaking into your adult your swim? hobbies. Speaking <laughs> speaking of Adult Swim. <laughs> no, I don't know what the fuck. We'll talk about Rick and Morty in a second. D- we're never going to get back to Rick and Morty. I think we might. I think we this might. This microphone's sad. But the most, the only conspiracy theory that for me is like I'm definitely open to um, the possibilities in regard to JFK. Like, what possibilities that, that he's the, an that, alien that the official government explanation for how he was killed there's more to the story than that what's that what's the what's the latest well the official the official one is still just lee harvey oswald right and there's no way there is no way that guy right. did it right exactly although it is odd and i don't know anything about jfk but uh, or the whole conspiracy i never saw the movie or anything but that guy did kill a guy on his way like trying to escape from the scene of the death of jfk so he he was very capable of murder oh are they we picked, all are they picked right a pretty scenario. good they picked a pretty good stooge yeah they picked a great stooge which i would expect nothing less, less from of the, the mafia yeah, and, the and the cia mafia. so my favorite conspiracy That's right, he fucked everything up with cuba and everything fucked it all up right fucked up the flow so my favorite conspiracy theory is that aliens are actually time traveling humans from the future oh i like that who I just come back that. who just come back to they're like scientists they come back to see what's going on here and that but would if explain, they're from the future wouldn't they already know well but it's, well, it's like a historical expedition where would you go if you could have an ex- historical expedition anywhere in the history? Yeah, uh, I've I've actually talked about this on a podcast somewhat recently too. I'm I, I'm just was raised in a very 20th century Eurocentric kind of world and Quit see, bragging. seeing like the uh, the the Versailles, the Louis the Fourteenth stuff would be very. Oh God, you're such a nerd. Would be very interesting to me. Not dinosaurs? But, Are you fucking but, but that, crazy? But but right you kind of you, you have to go to the furthest extreme from our current reality yeah, to go. see shit that right so i i don't know like the 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 dawn of life on planet earth is yes. probably a little bit more you can go to versailles and be like oh look at that that was a pillow i want jurassic park by the way there's a lot of dudes rolling around on the west side of los angeles that look like they would spare at no expense a lot of fucking wool hats with feathers and canes and they all look like they run dinosaur parks. You you see a lot of men who look like eccentric billionaires that are interested in reviving dinosaur species out of amber. Yes, and I I had a, I, I feel think like you and I run in different circles. You're you, not talking. You about, run in a square. You're not buddy. talking about Adam Carolla, are you? No, 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 no. Adam's such a blue collar dude. Yeah, blue collar dude. No, I'm talking about guys that are in Los Angeles. They smell like on the west side. It's on the west side. I almost choked on my spit. <laughs> they're on the west side and they smell like oils and they're in a lot of there's a lot of like linen and cream fabrics and a lot of beaded bracelets. There's yeah. beaded bracelets and also bracelets that they definitely made at home. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of sage. Oh, okay. I know what you're there's talking a about. Green, like rich hippies. R- richies. Yeah, right. There's a lot of richies out there. It's so odd to me how 
something has changed in our world that's kind of under remarked upon when people got rich it used to be really easy to explain how they got rich like look at that man in fancy right. spats and top hats and go well that guy opened one car dealership and then he opened another and now he yeah. you can't buy a chevrolet in michigan without buying it from dick wilson good he, old dicky will uh, yeah exactly there's a guy who does it on tiktok he goes up and he's like finds expensive cars, very opulent items, and asks the person, what do you do for a living? Yeah. So it's a good, it's exactly what's happening. And and they're just all of these, it goes from the very top of the modern faces of wealth with, you know, apps where people have made, you know, used to be you made your money by um, mining coal. Or obviously not, per, not personally, but you would. Hey kids, Mike Tully's talking about mining coal. Like I think Carnegie, it was coal money. Yeah, all those Roger Barons back in the day. Robber Barons? Roger Barons. No, their names were Roger Baron. <laughs> Robber Barons, yes, thank yeah. you. They they had like one industry that yeah, they right, ruled. And right, right, right. And, Hen- so and, and Henry Ford sold a bunch of cars. Yeah. And now there's the people at the top who they make an app and they make a billion dollars. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have this disparity of wealth between super rich people and, and not super rich people is because when Henry Ford wanted to make cars, he had to take a whole city of people and give them a job to make the fucking cars. Yeah, he needed all the those guy- people to be blue collar back breaking yeah. workers but they but they could still get a mortgage and maybe they could even afford to get like a boat or something like that and they could that put would their kids, also foreclose and they could put their kids through college and nowadays the that person we're stuck paying <laughs> well nowadays the person college who who who, who you know who invented bird scooters just needed to buy two hundred thousand scooters and he didn't need a workforce yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that guy gets billions of dollars and it, there aren't a bunch of people who become thousandaires because they go to work at the bird factory, BYRD, so to speak. But then there's the other guys that you're talking about. So on this person's TikTok that you just mentioned, what sorts of answers do those people give? A lot of technical, you know, in like um, real estate, in the tech world, um, also in this cryptocurrency yeah so what doctors you're saying? okay well doctors would be an exception to what i'm about to say but they used to be hard to make money without contributing i don't want to say contributing to society because obviously it can well, be creating really a tangible product that other people benefit from mm-hmm. right and you talk like crypto wall street law these are all things people can get into and make tons and tons of money without actually making anything that any of us are using or want yeah, yeah. it's a weird it's then, a weird late stage capitalism thing y- that we're living in you know the loophole to that what's that jeff bezos yeah for sure yeah amazon i probably have a have package heard waiting on it's pretty big it's pretty big i'm thinking about investing in those guys you heard it here first I, smart was going to give you, <laughs> you stock guys tips. should definitely like his parents toss in 250 g's mm-hmm. into amazon i think it's going to be big it's got I, a, it's got a chance I have, I've got to stop. I, we've discussed this before. I've been at your house when rude, four people. Sometimes even when you're there, <laughs> I mean, always three, four deliveries oh come God. at a time. Uh, my sister and I have coined it grief shopping. It's so bad <laughs> when you go. I'm, you know, I feel bad about what I'm doing to the world economy. Let me go buy something at Target instead. It's so. It really. That's such a solid yeah. point. We're, we've removed ourselves on a commercial level too far from the mom and pop shops yeah it, and convenience really is a killer and mm-hmm. I, i've said it before i really think that we're headed towards a wally existence we already are in a wally existence where we there's a lot of you know I'll tell you what towards that point mm-hmm. there's a lot of people at disneyland who don't need the scooter oh no 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 but no, 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 no. They just need it. said but wait hold on Fuck a second if i don't have to walk right I, look at me it's pretty obvious i don't care what i look like and if i can get to the front of the line at the hot dog stand why would i walk no there's definitely people who just prefer to ride the scooter all day and it becomes this perpetuating self-fulfilling cycle where i'm i let myself get a bigger than a person really ought to be so it's easier for me to ride the scooter around and eat funnel cake while i'm on the scooter which means i'm not getting any exercise which means i'm going to get even bigger etc 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 thereby becoming uh cyborgs the the union of man and uh scooter (laughs) (laughs) mooters yeah sure sure why can't it be women womooters there's some big ladies on scooters at disneyland too you feel better excuse me 
I know I do. Yeah, I guess. Wow, did you burp at Corollas? <laughs> no. <laughs> I bet you didn't. So I Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's a very, very. Good I can't show. believe you threw me under. You threw my shoes under the bus. It was very noticeable. Why did you, they don't? You they showed don't, up. They're not sh- seeing the shoes. You pulled up outside of the house, and I was like, "Wow, this is the best. This is the best I've ever seen you look. You are glowing right now." And I know that that's because you probably spent a little extra time on makeup. And why not? You're going to fucking Adam Carolla show, but you just look great. And then you. Oh, opened. actually, I'm cleaning out my gut bacteria. So and, thank you. And it shows. It shows. <laughs> My flora and fauna is currently getting balanced right now, and it is a talk about war. Oh yeah, you know, there's a war being raged inside of me. Probiotics are definitely real and definitely very, very effective. And, and I they forgot make a huge difference. Yes, yeah. I forgot. I was not taking them for a hot minute, and uh, oh boy, man, did I pay for that? Oh yeah, in a in a very. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, I think we get sure. Okay. Yeah. It, I really just. You pulled up and you looked so great. And oh, so flip flops ruined it for you. And then you opened the door and you're like, wow, what a what a what a smart tasteful outfit she's got on <laughs> and then what and, and then i saw like <laughs> dana, do, 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 do 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 i saw a foot come out and i'm like wow and shoes yeah. too and then just as my eye was like okay what kind of shoe is she wearing the fucking if you're on the, the patreon the, 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 the hospital <laughs> shoes plopped on the ground next to them and i was like oh that's what i get well, you know what you should say to yourself? What's that? Is that I feel comfortable enough being myself around you. You're welcome, you f- you fuck. Can you tell that to boyfriends too? No, I don't. I, I make them wonder all the time. That's how you keep them, even though I'm single. <laughs> 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 keep them on their toes. Just so, I won't keep my heels on my toes. Briefly, how was, how was Alaska? It was really... Be- had, you, had you been before? I had not been before. Okay. I highly recommend it. Here's the thing about Alaska... It's it's the Vegas of the nature world. Vegas, okay. You go to Vegas, you think about Vegas, you're like, God, I'd really like to go to Vegas. You've never been to Vegas, you're like, I want to go. The lights, the glamour, the gambling, it's just so, you know, luxurious and can play slots, blah, 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 blah. It's very appealing. And you get to Vegas and you're like, oh, Vegas is great. This is a lot of fun. And then the next day you're like, I don't know how much, I don't know how many more days in Vegas I can, I can stand. I did not feel that in Alaska and I feel that a lot with travel. But, after a few days of talking to the people who live there, they can't, they're like, don't move here. Please don't move to Alaska because this is it. This is all, yeah, you get these beautiful sprawling vistas. Mm-hmm. The sky is clear. The water's clear. The air's clear. They're yearning for Vegas the way people who live in Vegas and in, in civilizations like we live in, all these people, it's so populated, think about going to a nature location grass is the grass is, is literally greener, greener yeah, in alaska right, right, right but there's there might be a reason you're saying why they literally pay people to live there but then i thought maybe they're just doing that as a reverse psychology and oh, they don't want please. fuckers to move in they don't want it to turn into like austin <laughs> i knew you were gonna say that well that's what's happening yeah it's and so it drives all the it makes their rent more expensive i mm-hmm. get it so i think they were fucking with me they're like no nah, it's not that great and i'm like cool 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 but i just i'm gonna buy a house are you thinking of no? I, I think there's plenty of space up there. I would go to Colorado before I went to Alaska. Oh, yeah, Colorado is the kind of the place I've settled on. Is if I had to live in yeah. a, in a not metropolitan. I'm a city boy. I'm a city girl too, but I'm also I'm a half hippie. I'm a I'm a Richie. Yeah. So I want to go and be in nature. I love nature. It's where I honestly feel my most self, closest to my to myself. But Alaska was great, you know. The air was just so, so fresh. It was so crisp. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. I hear that. You can just pull a salmon right out of the... Out of the, out of the river. Alaskan river. A, I, we had salmon every single day. Just to take a bite of... Oh, still, I was like, oh, let me guess. It's fucking salmon. Still wriggling steelhead. It was a lot of fun. And the guy who booked the show was really... He took us on tours and we went on a glacier tour. Oh, you've been on a glacier? I've never been on one, but no, an not. emotional glacier. Right, yeah. I didn't get to go on. You don't get to go on the glacier. You just it's go not past like them? The, this isn't like a zoo where they put a fucking oh, saddle on a, on an elephant. Okay. You know, you get to ride an elephant. <laughs> yeah. This thing that's beautiful, like, natural. Yeah. This wild phenomenon. Un- this beautiful block thing. Yeah, and you're like, did you get on the glacier? I think no, people, I didn't get on the glacier. People do take, I think, helicopter rides onto glaciers. Do they? I think so. That's just I heard a one lot. time that you could, it's so cold. This doesn't make any sense that it's so cold that you could like block, you could take a chip off of it and you could like bring it home and it wouldn't even melt right yeah, away. Yeah, that's How true. Is it? 
It doesn't make any sense to me at all. How can something be so Cause, frozen? Because ice is, the, the way the glaciers are formed, the ice is so compact mm-hmm. that it its freezing rate is different than regular ice on top. So when ice, that's how it's formed. So the snow keeps going down, 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 compacting itself and forming it into a very condensed piece of ice. Yeah. That's science. You're welcome, folks. That was right from Bill Nye, science guy's mouth, to your ears through my mouth. You sounded like you knew what you were talking about. But they do clip, chip the ice yeah. off of the glaciers in the in the water. That's mm-hmm. where they are. And and also in the mountains. And you, they put it in your drinks. They put it, They bring it back onto the boat. So I literally had glacial, glacial water. Maybe that's what fucked up my gut bacteria. Yeah. But Maybe did it's you not know, that you stop getting probiotics at Target. I have to stop getting my pro... <laughs> I do have to stop doing that. I also have to stop just drinking, taking drinks that people hand to me. Um, did you know that valleys are created by glacier movement? Uh, kind of, right? Like, peaks and valleys are created by the movement of glaciers in, in some the of wild. Them, some of them, for sure, yeah. Because you have like the big thing of land and then the, the ice you can usually see that the ice the glass had like uh, the glacier had scraped through it at some point that's exactly what it lines. does yeah it kind of just right. moves back and forth and right now we're in a glacier over session which is obviously what's going on because you know we've been yelled at and screamed at by greta thurnberg when if greta thurnberg's screaming at you you're at a gla- you're in a glacial recession yeah that's what that means and so it goes back She's like in the groundhog of she is the <laughs> glaciers. of global warming <laughs> so a glacier kind of seesaws into yeah, yeah. the earth right okay and it cuts okay. into the mountain mm-hmm. and it creates all those like vast valleys and peaks i thought that was so interesting i didn't know that that because of at one point it was all covered in ice and then ice, there was melted. an ice there were there have been multiple ice ages yes and yeah. we're probably never going to see one again oh, we except w- if it were in the movie theater which we probably won't see because it'll be uh burned completely combusted because we've burned they are alive. probably making another ice age movie as we speak and you, it's will, great. you will never see it but you and you guys won't either because we'll be dead by the time it's done yeah but i just rewatched ice age a couple weeks ago really still holds up ray romano G- great movie Johnny i cried Legs. i laughed and what's his name dennis leary plays the, he is mm-hmm, plays the protag antagonist i would i would say Keep getting them checks dennis leary um we covered a lot today we covered uh genocide the uh, you know apparently there was a holocaust uh we covered ufos mm-hmm. um allegedly and we also never got back to my Rick and Mort- Morty story. It's a good, it's a good show, and um, I, I just I think, started watching it. I think most of us who have been watching it from the beginning would agree it's not quite as great now as it once was. Okay, but, but then again, what is? But I'm what also is? some people. There's like a backlash to people. I think put the earlier seasons on such a pedestal that now they feel the need to shit on the new ones. Oh God! I find the newer stuff personally, as somebody who doesn't participate in that conversation, I don't care what Reddit has to say about the new Rick and morty i just watch it even if it's terrible i'll still i mean it's still better than most of the shit on tv it's one of the greatest written shows they uh they still have their moments where it's not so much this season the one before it there was an episode that i was like kind of like found literally jaw-dropping i think that we all need perspective things can't be great forever we need them to dip so that we can be appreciative when they are yeah when they come back, there's a spider crawling on your floor, and it's very small, but it is coming at me at an aggressive rate. Oh, I see that. Oh, that's, that's nothing compared to the evils and dangers that lurk and have lurked in this room. Fun fact, last time you were down, you've been here twice, uh, I think only one other time. Last time you were here, you may have noticed that there was like a black smudge on the I know. wall over what was here. That? I Can I tell you how dumb I am? I tell you how dumb I am. Yeah. I had been keeping. It sounds uh, like something an early radio, uh, early morning radio show host says. Let me uh, tell you how dumb I am. I had. I don't know where it is now. There was a television that was up against it, oh, and no. I thought the TV had left a mark. I was like, "Oh, look at that! I didn't know that could happen." The black TV left a mark. No, that was the black mold seeping out of the wall. My jaw is dropped. Did you cause my gut rot from this moldy ass? studio it has the good maybe may, that would be the bad news you better not pay mortgage or rent the good news is it ha- but i caused it it was my own fault that's the thing with i own yeah, i don't I know how that. this podcast is gonna work out if you cause black mold hey guys this is our first and our fifth and final episode of <laughs> oh wait no this is no, a swap is cast not, yeah yeah this is a swap cast i both cause and remediate mold at great expense to myself but i get top of the line guys and then i insist that they rip me off so. no wonder i feel so headachey when i leave you yeah yeah and and, and here you were thinking it was just me yeah (laughs) so 
<laughs> this is the official notice to the world that we will now be doing a podcast together each and every week. And you guys asked and we answered. It'll be just as delightful as this, if not more. So the f- first few ones that we've done, <laughs> I almost got it out. <laughs> Have been uh, very, very funny. I had to re-listen to a couple of them. They are. We are funny. funny. Yeah. It's me explaining the life to to Mike Teller, really. It's me just teaching him things. Right. I think the first episode is where you found out that Paris Hilton made a sex tape. I can't. Yeah, you really. I can't believe that. Thank you. Thank you. You teach me really the important stuff. And I just taught you that the Holocaust was a hoax. (laughs) For anybody listening, this is a, we're having fun. I know the Holocaust was real, allegedly. You talk a lot of bullshit about glaciers, though. Yeah, we talked a lot of bullshit about glaciers. We are very excited about this podcast. Mm-hmm. It has been months in the making, if Many. not if not over a year, because of conceptually thinking about it, which is a d- d- you know double negative, whatever. I, I, I my brain is firing. <laughs> I and think we're shutting done. off. We're so done. everybody Bye. go. Once you're done with Smartless, <laughs> you're done too. <laughs> head immediately to. Once you're done with Smartless, come Patreon. over here. dot com slash the Deuce podcast. podcast. The Deuce. Thanks for listening podcast. to Sharp Tongue and the Tully Show. And we're combining. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>